Welcome to Electron Line. Here we have another very interesting problem for you. We have a beam that is not attached to the vertical post. It only is being held up by the friction between the beam and the post. On the other end is being held up by this cable, making an angle of 20 degrees with the horizontal. The mass of the beam is M, and it's, and it's supported, it's supporting another mass which is suspended from it with um, with a mass m at a distance of x away from the post. Now we have the ability to move this mass back and forth. And what we want to try to find out here is what is the minimum distance that x must be in such a way that the beam will not slip down, that the friction here between the beam and the post will keep this beam from slipping down. You can imagine that the farther away you move this m, the less force will be pulling down on the beam here, but the closer you put the mass right here, the greater the force here, the, more, the greater the likelihood that the beam will slip down. So what causes this friction force between the beam and the post? Well, what, what does is the force pushing the beam into the post, and that's, that is done by the horizontal uh, component of the tension in the string here. So if you think about this as being the tension in the string, and then you realize that we have a vertical component, we call this T in the Y direction, and then we have a T in the X direction. And it's the T in the X direction that pushes the beam against the post, which causes a normal, fo normal force to exist right here, which is the normal force. In this case, the normal force will be equal to T sub X. And then the friction force, which is this force right here, the force keeping the beam from slipping, the friction force can be found by taking the normal force times the coefficient of friction, mu, and then finally we can say that the friction force is equal to the x component of the tension times mu. To find the x component, and knowing that this angle here is 20 degrees, we can say that the friction force is equal to the tension times the cosine of 20 degrees, times mu. So to find the friction force, we need to find the normal force. To find the normal force, we need to find T sub x. To find T sub x, we need to find the tension. To find the tension, we have to use the torque method. What we have to say here is we're going to, since we don't know what's going on here at this point, we'll call that the pivot point. The length of the beam is equal to L. Else will cancel out. And so using this concept that the sum of all the torques about this pivot point right here, if you call this pivot point A, if all the torques about A must add up to zero. So all we have to do now is find all the torques and add them up to zero. The first torque is caused by the mass hanging down from the beam. It's at a distance x away from the pivot point. And so we have the line of action of the force. Let's just show you what that looks like. I'm going to use a different color here we have the mg acting downward and then we have the perpendicular distance from the line of from the line of action of the force to the pivot point and that will then cause a clockwise torque to exist which is negative torque that means we have a minus mg times x the second torque is caused by the weight of the beam itself we need to find the center of mass of the beam which is about here we then realize that we have, we have another mg acting down over here. So this is mg caused by the beam. And the distance from, from the line of action of that force to the pivot point, let's call that d1. Because we don't know, we don't know yet what d1 is equal to. That means this is equal to, and it's also going to cause a negative torque, so minus mg times d1. And finally, we have the tension. The tension is causing a counterclockwise direction torque about the pivot point. That is a positive torque, so plus the tension times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point, which would be this distance right here. And since I don't know what it is yet, I'll call that D2. So tension times D2. I always like to write D1, D2, and so forth if I don't know what it is, and then figure it out later so I don't get confused about the numbers. Now we need to plug in what we know. Zero is equal to minus mgx minus mg times d1. Now d1 has to be the halfway the length of the beam from here to there is L, and it has to be at the halfway point that would be L over 2. 
plus, and then we have the tension here times D2. Now, how do we find D2? Here we have a right triangle. This is the 90 degree angle of the right triangle. Notice that um, this here, uh, let's see, this is a hypotenuse. We have the angle here of 20 degrees, and D2 is the opposite side to the 20 degree angle. Opposite side means the sine. So we get D2 is equal to L times the sine of 20 degrees. Again, L is the hypotenuse, that's the length of the beam. This is the opposite side to the angle here, 20 degrees. Opposite side means the sine, so it's L times the sine of 20 degrees. Well, that gives us the tension. We can now express the tension on the cable here in terms of x. Let's do that. Let's solve for t. That means we need to have this on one side, t times l times the sine of 20 degrees is equal to bringing those two terms to the other side of the equation, the other side of the equal sign and turning, equal, and turning the equation around, we get mg times x plus mg times l divided by 2. That means that the tension is equal to mgx plus mgl over 2 divided by l times the sine of 20 degrees. We could probably simplify that, but we'll leave it like that for now. Now we're ready to find the friction force because we know the friction force is equal to T times the cosine of 20 degrees times mu, and we know that the tension is equal to that, which means that the friction force is equal to the tension mg times x plus mg times L over 2 divided by L times the sine of 20 degrees multiply that times the cosine of 20 degrees and multiply the times mu. So now we have the friction force. Now that we have the friction force, how do we find out that the beam will not slip? Well, what we can do now is we can put the pivot point on the other side and sum up all the forces causing a torque relative to this point. So I'm going to call this point B. Point B. And now I'm going to add up all the, hmm, there could be a different way of doing it. I'm just thought of something. I could do that. I could put the pivot point right there and add up all the torques. The torques would then be caused by these two right here and by this one right here. However, I could also add up the sum of all the force in the y direction. I have the T sub y and I have mg, mg, and the force in the in the uh, y direction here, which would be the friction force. But then I have to deal with T sub y again, and T sub y will probably be kind of a messy thing, since T is kind of a messy thing right here. So I think I'll stick with the, with the methodology of putting the pivot point right there and adding up all the torques, causing a torque about point B. I'm going to do that. The sum of all the torques about B must add up to zero, which means that we have the mg here, so that would be um, that would cause a counterclockwise torque about B. That would be a positive torque. Mg caused by the weight right here that's hanging from the beam times the perpendicular distance here, which would be L minus X. I have the weight of the beam itself that would be at the halfway point. Again, that would be a positive torque because it would cause a counterclockwise motion about point B. That would be Mg times L over two. And now we finally have the force here, the friction force at A, acting over distance of L, and that would give us a clockwise motion about point B, that would be a negative torque, minus the friction force, and the friction force is equal to this quantity right here, that would be equal to mg times x, plus mg times L over two, times a cosine of 20 degrees, times mu, all divided by L times the sine of 20 degrees. Of course, I put parentheses around that because that's a, a negative quantity. And then we have to multiply times the perpendicular distance from the line of action of force to the pivot point, which is L. And then here you can see that this L cancels out that L. And now what we have is an equation that should allow us to solve for
for x, because x is the only unknown here. Assuming you know L, L would be just a quantity. Um, so we have an x here, we have an x there, and everything else should be a known quantity. To make it a little bit easier, let's plug in some numbers, because I think that would make things a little bit easier for us to work with. Assume that the mg is equal to 100 newtons. So this would be equal to 100 newtons. And let's say that L is equal to, let's call it 10 meters. We're now ready. Well, 10 meters would be kind of a big, long beam for a 100 newton beam. I'm going to simplify that. Let's call L equal to 1. All right. Now let's go ahead and solve for x with those numbers. 0 is equal to 100 times 1 minus x plus 100 times L divided by 2, that would be 1 half, minus 100 times x. And I'm going to distribute the negative sign over here. That would be minus 100 times 1 half times the cosine of 20 degrees times mu, which we said was 0 0.5. And the whole thing is divided by the sine of 20. That means I need to divide this by the sine of 20. And I need to divide this by the sine of 20 degrees. Simplifying things a little bit further, 0 is equal to 100 minus 100x plus 50 minus 100x divided by the sine of 20. Let's see, I got too many pens in my hand. Okay, so we have 100 divided by the, the sine of 20 equals, that would be 292. So minus 292x minus, all right, so we have 50 times 0.5 times the cosine of 20 divided by the sine of 20. And that gives me 68.7. 68.7, let's call it 69. Okay, I'm almost there. Well, again, what I'm doing here is I'm solving for x that would set the friction force to just the right value to keep this from slipping. So we're trying to find the distance x. Moving all the x's to one side, 100x and 292x, that gives us 392x on the left side of the equation. That would be equal to 100 plus 50 minus 69. 392x is equal to 150 minus 69. That would be uh, 81. 81 plus this. That would be 150. And finally, we can then say, come over here, because we're running out of room, x is equal to 81 divided by 392. And that gives me 0 0.207. So x would be 0 0.207, 207, which is equal to, this is in meters, of course, because we had length in meters. This would then be 20.7 centimeters. So the closest that we can take the mass here towards the post is a distance of 20.7 centimeters. You bring it any closer, the beam will slip. You keep it 20.7 centimeters away or farther, the beam will not slip. The friction will hold up the post. I mean, the, the friction will hold up the beam against the post. Again, let's do a quick review. We're trying to find the minimum x. We found the torque about 0.8 to discover the tension which gave us the tension in the y direction and the tension in the x direction. The tension in the x direction allowed us to find the friction force. The friction force can be expressed like this because we found the tension using the sum of the torques in about 0.8. Then to find the weight at this end right here, the friction force, or in other words, in other words, the amount of friction we would need to keep the beam from slipping, we then put our pivot point on the other side, we sum up all the torques relative to point B, in such a way that the friction force will be just enough to hold things up and we solve then for the value x. And that's how we do that.